choosing to be a part of our worship service this morning. For our announcements, we'll continue to worship on YouTube and Facebook until the coronavirus improves. Please wear your mask and distance yourself. Stay in whenever possible and uh, try and get your uh, coronavirus shot. Sometimes kind of hard to get, but keep trying. Reach out to others as we're having to stay in. More and more people are feeling uh, closed in and forgotten, and we need to let people know that we are thinking about them, we care about them. This past week, I had my uh, meeting by Zoom with the District Committee of Ordain Ministry. It was a good meeting, and they recommended that I continue in the ministry, and uh, I'm very pleased with that, and they will announce appointments somewhere down the road, and hopefully I'll continue to be appointed here at Meadowview Church. We wish people happy birthdays, anniversaries, and other special Occasions. Our 
prelude today was Majesty, Worship His Majesty. Please join with me as we say together our call to worship that comes from the first chapter of Psalms. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take, take the, the path, path that sinners tread, or sin in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they, they meditate, meditate day, day and, and night. night. We'll now have our first song for our worship service, I'll Fly Away. Conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Our second song, I'd Rather Have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His 
that have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway I'd rather have my Jesus than anything this world of Today, I'd rather have Jesus than worldly applause. I'd rather be faithful to His dear cause. I'd rather have my Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have my Jesus than anything this world affords today. He's fairer than lilies of rarest He's sweeter than honey from out of the comb. He's all that my hungry spirit needs. I'd rather have my Jesus and let him lead than to be than anything this world affords today. Thank you. Very beautiful song. Brother and Jesus. How has God blessed you this week? Think back through each day, the good things that have happened. Think about the blessings, how people have helped you, ways that you've been surprised, maybe. All of these things are a result of a blessing from God. So please make sure that you stop and thank God for the good things in your life. God is good. All, All the, the time. time. All the time. God, God is good. good. Amen. So we we'll go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. There are many things that we want to remember and pray about. Our people that are sick for many reasons, people that are grieving, 
people in isolation, people that are hurting economically, pray for our world and our country. Let us pause for our meditation and our prayers. Lord, you are amazing, awesome. Your love is never ending. Your mercy was, was without end. Lord, be with those that are sick, whether it's the COVID virus or whether it's other illnesses. Be with the patients and help them to gain strength, return to normal health if that's within your will. Be with their families, their caregivers, their doctors, nurses, all the different people that are involved in their care. And Lord, people are dying for many reasons. We ask that you provide comfort and strength and peace for all those that are mourning. Lord, be with those that are struggling financially. Help them to be able to find ways to make ends meet. Help them to find work full-time work, work that would pay a, a living wage. <clears throat> Lord, be with our churches. It's, it's difficult to see our churches either with few people or empty. Help us to continue to reach out in the different ways that, that we can in order to help others and serve you. Bless the service, Lord. Help us to glorify your name. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I'll remind our members and our attenders that we need to give our offerings to the church so we can pay our bills. I send out our newsletter about a week ago and I included in that newsletter a couple of uh, offering envelopes and also a, an envelope with our uh, treasurer's name and address on it. Our treasurer is Diane Carter and please help any way that you can. Our special music today, Here I Am to Worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you.
Verses 9 through 15. Again, I'm reading from the King James Version. Mark chapter 1, beginning with verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened, and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today's reading comes from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. If you haven't read the Gospels before, Mark is a, is a good place to start with, in part because it gets to the point very quickly. Not only is it the shortest of the four Gospels, but also it's the fastest moving of them. It does not even include a birth story that opens right away with John the Baptist announcing the arrival of the adult Jesus on the scene. There's almost a breathless quality to Mark. This happened this, and then this, and bang, bang, bang. For example, in, in a mere six verses from 9 through 15, we're told about the baptism of Jesus by John, Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, then his arrival in Galilee after John is arrested, and there Jesus preaches the good news of the gospel, the good news of God. Let's zero in on the last two of those verses, for this is where Mark gives us the essence of Jesus' message, that which he spent his time on earth delivering. Listen to just those two verses again. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near, Repent and believe in the good news. There aren't many words here, but these few tell of two momentous indicators that a dramatic change has taken place and present two calls for action that people should take as a result. One, as one commentator puts it, the two facts and the two acts. And this is a quote from Bonnie Bowman Thurston in the book Preaching Mark. 
We'll look at those in a moment, but first notice that Mark tells us that Jesus came preaching the good news of God. When Mark opens his book, his first sentence says, in the beginning was the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He looks at the life and work of Jesus, and he calls it good news, which is what the word gospel means. And that's a, a correct use of the term. But note that when Jesus comes, he doesn't point to himself, even though he's part of the good news, but to the work of God. The content of that news is what is contained in two facts. First, the time is fulfilled. This is a way of saying that the waiting period is over. We know from the Old Testament that many people have been looking for a new action from God, some intervention in the course of history that would change things dramatically. There was a hope for a Messiah, a Savior. And Jesus is saying that that time of waiting has been completed. And the era for which they have been waiting has come. To get a sense of why this is a part of the good news. Think of people who live in countries ruled by totalitarian dictators where most personal freedoms are denied. In some of these countries, there are embassies from which the first free nations, and in some cases, it's possible for citizens of the repressed nation to go to one of these places and apply for a visa to immigrate to a free nation. That permission isn't granted automatically, and it's seldom given right away. Even assuming that there are no things on your record, to mark you as an undesirable person, you still are placed on a waiting list until a slot opens in the receiving country, and that wait can amount to years. But then after a long wait, you finally receive a notice from the embassy that your visa has been granted. That is the day of good news. The time is fulfilled and your new life is about to begin. This is similar to what Jesus was saying about God's new action in the world. The time of waiting was over. And that brings us to the second fact Jesus stated. The kingdom of God has come near. This is a critical piece of the announcement. Because if Jesus had only said that the time was fulfilled, that by itself could just as easily be the beginning of worse news. To go back to our example of the person in the totalitarian country waiting for a visa, the time of waiting could have ended with a notice from the embassy of the free nation that the visa request had been denied. That would be saying that the time was fulfilled, but what had come was bad news. Or imagine yourself having some physical symptoms that cause you concern about your health. Your doctor orders some tests, and now you're waiting for the results. When the results finally come in, the time is fulfilled, but the news could be either bad or good. But in the case of Jesus' message, it is pure good news. Not only is the time of waiting over, but the kingdom of God has drawn near. God's new day is about to dawn. Something fresh was beginning with the appearance of Jesus. Imagine that you have a, a job where the supervisor is difficult or even nasty to work for. But one day that person is fired or retires or is promoted or, or dies in some way leaves the job. And a new person takes the position. 
That new person may bring in a new era, especially if he or she is a better supervisor. A new reign begins. Jesus was saying something like that, only so much more. The kingdom of God meant that God was entering human history in a way that offers us new opportunities, new hope, new joy, new ways of thinking, and new ways of living. That leads to the two acts people need to do to take advantage of the opportunity. The kingdom of God coming near provides. The first of these says, Jesus is to repent. We're used to thinking of the word repent as meaning to turn away from our sins. And that sense is included here, but the original Greek used in the text also means to shift the direction of our lives, to give full attention to the kingdom of God. That's important because thinking of the gospel as primarily having to do with forgiveness of sins can leave a person who doesn't feel particularly sinful to wonder if repentance has any meaning for them. But here Jesus says that the approach of the kingdom of God is for all of us, not just those conscious of their sins. Repentance is a direction for our lives. Jesus says a new order is at hand. Get a new mind that fits in. The second action, Jesus says, is to believe the good news. To believe something in the sense implied here, it is not so much being convinced of a fact, but to act on what we are convinced of. If I believe that a certain doctor can cure me of a disease, then I demonstrate that belief by putting myself in his care. If I believe that the way of Jesus Christ is the best way to live my life, then I demonstrate that belief by trying to live my life is the way of Jesus Christ. Also implied in this call to believe is the sense that the time for acting is now. The time of waiting is over. Time's up. Decision time has come. Act now. There's a sense of urgency to return once more to the example of the person that is applied to the embassy of the free nation to migrate. This can be to call of the person receiving the notice that says, come to the embassy um, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. for the visa. So if you're that person and you really want to go to a free nation, do you say, well, Tuesday's not convenient. I'll go when I get a chance. Of course not. Jesus' call carries that saying that time to act is now importance. The heart of the good news is not a new idea or a fresh load of guilt or a novel philosophy of life or a new code of behavior. It's a call to respond to Jesus Christ. It's a call to commit our lives to following Jesus and obeying God. Some of this doesn't easily connect for us because whatever was meant by the approach of the kingdom of God 2,000 years ago, it didn't mean the end of human pain suffering, injustice, or the unfairness of life. Many things have changed since the time of Jesus, but the power of evil and greed and self-centeredness have marched on unabated. But no two things. First, that the fullness of the kingdom doesn't come until the end of time. The second, the kingdom is present in an inward way right now. 
people who commit their way to Jesus Christ experience a sense of joy and peace and hope that often seems not warranted by outward circumstances, but which is the realm of the heart and mind, the regions where peace, joy, and hope matter most. The table is set, and you and I are invited. In the end, the full understanding of Christ's good news message comes not by dissecting it into facts and acts, but by embracing it and discovering in our own lives why the opportunities presented by the nearness of the kingdom of God revolutionize our lives. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have to experience the peace and the joy and the hope that only you can provide. Thank you, Lord. For we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn today, Count Your Blessings. Thank you for being with us for our worship service today. We hope that you have a very blessed week. And now, be in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>